Doug Fleener here, aka Dr. DMX, with another of my videos on DMX 512. At the beginning of my videos, I like to list the rules for healthy DMX 512. Use the right cable. Terminate every cable run. Never Y the DMX signal. Don't tie DMX common to earth ground at multiple locations. Keep cable runs less than a thousand feet and no more than 32 DMX devices per output. Today's topic is cabling. We're going to talk about what is DMX cable? Microphone cable versus DMX cable. One pair versus two pair cables. Three pin versus five pin cables. Maximum DMX cable length. And finally, DMX over CAT5 cable. First, what is a DMX cable? DMX cables are shielded, twisted pair cables with two critical qualities, low capacitance and 120 ohm impedance. A cable that has these qualities can carry DMX 512 signals over a thousand feet. Other qualities such as flexibility, strength, outside diameter, and color do not affect the signal, but may be important for a particular application. DMX 512 requires three wires, data plus, data minus, and common. The data plus and data minus wires are twisted together. This is for noise immunity and balance. A shield is required around the data wires and is connected to common at both ends. The DMX 512 standard allows for a second optional data pair, a second data plus and data minus. In two pair cables, it's important that one twisted pair be used for the first data plus, data minus, and the other twisted pair be used for the second data plus and data minus. Miswiring the first twisted pair to the two data plus lines and the second twisted pair to the two data minus lines will result in a very unreliable cable. Cables that are not suitable for DMX 512 include star quad cable, where the four conductors are twisted around a common center, and individually shielded cable, where each conductor is shielded before they are twisted together. These types of cables do not provide the noise immunity of a twisted pair cable. They also don't meet the low capacitance or 120 ohm requirements. Microphone cable versus DMX cable. One of the most common DMX questions is, can I use microphone cable to carry DMX 512? The technically correct answer is yes, for short distances. The politically correct answer is no, never use anything but data cable to carry DMX 512. Dr. DMX says, yes, you may be able to get away with it, but please don't. I've done many talks on DMX 512. I've done many experiments with DMX 512. I'd love to show viewers compelling demonstrations backed by technically accurate data as to why microphone cables should never be used for DMX 512. However, the fact is that DMX 512 is unbelievably forgiving and will usually work with the wrong cable. You can even run DMX over three strands of barbed wire, providing you are willing to risk the show. One problem with DMX is it works fine until it doesn't. A functioning system can be so close to failure that all it takes is a little interference from a cell phone, an elevator motor kicking on, or a security guard's walkie-talkie to cause a glitch that sets off the confetti cannons during a critical three-point shot. The best way to avoid DMX failure is follow all the rules, and one of those rules is use the right cable. Earlier, I mentioned there are two primary qualities of a good DMX cable, low capacitance and 120 ohm characteristic impedance. Let's talk about low capacitance. This is an electrical capacitor. It stores energy in an electric field. Capacitors are used in electronics to form filters. This is a flux capacitor. Flux capacitors are used in time travel and have no impact on this discussion. I sent him into the future! I'm back. Where were we? Oh yes, capacitors. All cables have capacitance, which is measured in picofarads per foot. The longer the cable, the more the capacitance. Cable capacitance is an unwanted property in DMX cables. It filters out some of the signal, corrupting its integrity and reducing its strength. As an example of how filtering can affect the reliability of a signal, I'm going to filter my voice. Although audio 
differs greatly from DMX512, the concept that filtering can affect the readability of a signal is valid. Belden is one of the most well-known cable manufacturers. A quick look through the Belden catalog shows microphone cables ranging from 18 to 53 picofarad per foot, with the average being 49, and DMX512 cables ranging from 11 to 13 picofarads. Two things to note here. First, the capacitance of microphone cables varies widely. If you use mic cables, you may not know what you are getting. Second, DMX cables have less than one-fourth the capacitance of the average mic cable. This means that the DMX signal will travel over four times as far on DMX cable as on average microphone cable. But why, you may ask, is capacitance more of a problem for DMX512 than for audio? DMX512 is a digital signal with components in the megahertz range. Audio signals are limited to about 20 kilohertz. That's over 50 times slower. Cable capacitance affects higher frequencies more, so DMX is affected more. You may also ask, what if I only use low capacitance mic cable? I'd answer, that's better than a high capacitance mic cable. But if you're buying low capacitance cable anyway, why not buy DMX cable? The fact is, low capacitance mic cable, with a characteristic impedance between 100 and 120 ohms, is okay for DMX. But data cable is still better. Which brings us to the second most important quality of a DMX cable, characteristic impedance of 120 ohms. Characteristic impedance is a cable specification that cannot be easily measured. It is defined as the impedance an infinitely long cable would present as a load. An equally valid definition is that value of resistance, which if placed at the end of a cable, would make the cable appear infinitely long. Here are some examples of cables designed to a specific characteristic impedance. This is 75 ohm coax cable, often used to carry cable television signals. This is 300 ohm twin lead, often used to carry signals from a TV antenna. This is 110 ohm AES EBU cable, also known as digital audio cable, which, by the way, makes excellent DMX cable. This is 120 ohm DMX cable. All cables have a characteristic impedance, but since audio signals are not typically affected by characteristic impedance, microphone cable impedance may vary and is often not listed in the specifications. A typical characteristic impedance for a microphone cable is 60 ohms. DMX cables, on the other hand, are ideally 120 ohms, although values between 100 and 120 are considered acceptable. And, since DMX cables are 120 ohms, they're supposed to be terminated with 120 ohm terminators. If a 60 ohm microphone cable is terminated with 120 ohm terminators, there will be 60 ohms left over, which will eventually overflow and spill out, flooding the deck with unimaginable incoherent data causing mayhem and chaos so widespread that even Aslan the Lion will not be able to save the show. Phew. Actually, not matching the characteristic impedance of the wire to the value of the terminator is what causes reflections. I talk more about termination and reflections in my video why terminate?